My name's Josh, and this is Break Bear Farm. farm super glad you're here today we're back down in brave bear studios also known as the brave bear dungeon but today's topic is going to be a lot of fun you're really going to enjoy this i can't wait to get started one more thing before we get started please don't forget to hit that like button and hey we really want you to be part of the brave bear family so please subscribe to our channel and come hang out with us on the farm all right so today's topic we are talking about incubating chicken eggs this is one of the funnest things I think we can do on the farm. Just being a part of bringing in new life, it's, it's just so much fun. Hatching day is like the best day. Um, chicken starts peeping out of that thing. My kids come, they, they're checking it out. It's, it's a lot of fun. So today we're specifically going to talk about dry incubation. Um, we're going to walk through the whole 21 day process and show you what we do to set up, how we choose our eggs, and we're gonna throw them in there and let you see them uh, randomly throughout uh, this process. So we'll candle them, let you see uh, at a few stages uh, what's going on inside that egg. And then ultimately, the fun part is seeing the hatch there at the end. So we're gonna catch as much of this as we can. And uh, I look forward to you coming with us on the farm. All right, it's about time to start putting some eggs in the incubator and getting this process started. But before we do that, I wanna take a second to catch you up on what I've done so far. So we keep our incubator in the barn in the brooder so it gets a little dusty. So brought it out here with just some plain soap and water, clean that thing up, got it ready, got everything inside of it clean, got all the dust out of it, cleaned it all off. Um, and that's important. So just um, something to note that you really need to make sure at the end of this whole process that you clean your incubator because if you don't, it's going to get really nasty. Uh, you probably won't be able to use it very long if you don't keep it clean. So um, after these eggs and little chickies hatch in there, you're going to want to clean that up thing that thing up as quickly as possible. All right, once you've gotten it clean, now is the time that you got to start getting the temperature right. You want to make sure you you reach that point where you know that the temperature is staying pretty steady in your incubator. So what I have found with these things is that the external temperature is important as well. This is in my basement. It's cooler in my basement. So I've had to add a little bit of heat onto this from a distance to try to make sure it stays constant, the temperature around it so that this little thermostat can keep that constant temperature in there. If you got, if it's super cold in, in where you're using this, if you're doing it outside in a barn or something like that, um, you may have trouble with, with this style of, of incubator. Uh, I've got it, it's shutting on uh, right around 100 degrees and shutting off around 105. So the temperature is recommended at 99.5, all right, for, and that's typically, that's, that's the right on number. Now, most people say that's for a circulated air. If you've got circulated air, this is not a circulated air. So some people say 101 degrees for this, um, for this type of incubator. So I keep it right at 100. I, I keep, I try to just split the difference and go right in, at 100 and try to make sure I keep it somewhere between 100 to 105 100.5, not 105, 100.5. Um, so just to make sure I kind of keep a, a solid temperature. It's not, I mean, 101, 99 is not super big deal, but you can make these things hatch early, which is not a good thing. If you hatch early, they could end up being preemies, basically, and not fully developed. So, uh, so there's that. So another thing that I do is I print out this little uh, sheet right here. It's in uh, the description of where to find this is uh, down below. But this is just a chart. If you're turning by hand, this is super important. This helps you to remember when you turned last. 
keep track of that. Keep track of when you're turning it, how often you're turning it, because if you miss it, you, you need to pay attention. You know what you're doing. So um, this also tells you some days you can candle. It also gives you a lot of information on the side about temperatures and the humidity and stuff like that that you want. Now, as far as the humidity on this chart, we're not going uh, to follow and abide by. We're just going to go straight dry incubation, um, humidity. They say for the first 18 days in a wet incubation, they want 45 to 50. And in a um, in the last lockdown period, 18 to 21, it's 65 to 70% humidity. We're not doing that. We're going straight dry all the way through this time. Last time I will say I did this, I did a dry incubation last time. I did add water in the final stage, in the lockdown stage. So this time I'm not going to do that. I'm going total dry and see if we make any difference. We had about a 75% hatch rate, I think, last time. So this time we're going to have more eggs in here for sure. Um, so we're going to see what comes of it. I'm going to do a lot of different things with incubation uh, here in the next coming days and just see what works. Um, some people like to clean their eggs, sterilize their eggs with a couple different solutions. Um, and some people say don't do anything, just put them in straight in. So that's what we're going to do this time. We're just going to put them straight in there, try to make sure we select uh, some ones that are clean and not really dirty. Uh, that way we'll hopefully have a good hatch rate and we'll see how this works. Um, so we've got our temperature set. Now it's time to choose some eggs. All right, so these are the eggs that we have hatched in our farm over the last three days. Um, that's another thing we're going to test out here in, in, some, in some coming days is how long you can actually wait before putting them into the, into the incubator. Most of what I've seen is somewhere around 14 days, some people say. So I, I don't know if that's true or not. We're going to find out ourselves with some experience here coming up. So these are the oldest ones. What I want for, for me in this incubation, one of the important things about this is for me to find out which ones of my uh, groups of chickens are really fertile. Um, I'm pretty sure my my big group is going to be pretty fertile. I've seen the the roosters doing their thing. It's uh, there's 19 birds in no excuse me 18 females in there and no sorry 17 females and two roosters in there. So I'm pretty sure I've got a good mix in there and I'm I'm hoping that everybody's pretty fertile in there. My old group, I've got one rooster to five hens. I know they're um, they're good. We've actually um, hatched out some some eggs from them already as well. So I know that they're going to be pretty fertile. But I'm going to get some of them in, and then our reds. So with our reds right now, we have a banshee. He's a little bantam. It's not ideal. It's not exactly what I want uh, in with my reds, but that's what I've got right now. And he's going to hang out with them. So I don't know if they're going to be very fertile. So. Um, I'm going to try, I've written down on each one of my eggs, an R, a B, or an O for reds, my big group, and my old group. Um, I say old, they're only a year and a half old, they're not, they're just the oldest group on the farm. Um, but, so now what we're going to do is we're going to choose, number one, a variety of colors. I want a variety of colors, and I want, um as many of the reds as I can get in probably because I want them to I want to, I really want to see if these guys are fertile now you put in the pointy end down down in the uh, turn you do not want it up the other way because the air sac ends up developing up here and that's how they'll ultimately breathe when they when they start to pop out so uh, these are two reds I'm gonna put I'm gonna spread them out so they're all you know, if I put all the reds here and then this whole row doesn't hatch, well, is there something wrong with this row or is it just because they're all reds? So we're going to move them around. So that's a big, again, different color egg. Don't want huge eggs. Don't want huge eggs. We want um, pretty normal size eggs and we want, okay, so an old wives tail is a pointy egg is... A rooster and a rounder egg is a as a hen. I think that's malarkey, to be honest. But we're gonna try to pay attention to that a little bit. I think so far all of these are fairly round. 
All right, so we've got our eggs chosen. And as you can see, we've got a pretty good variety of color. Um, I ended up with six of my red girls, six of my old girls, and 30 of the bigs. Um, I guess important to note, the ones I didn't choose, I was sad to see one of my reds um, had just a little bit of a dimple in it. So that one's not going to be any good. I'm going to try to use that. But uh, the other ones, this one was just dirty. Um, so ones that were incredibly dirty, um, like this one, uh, just chose not to use those. Those are going to need the egg washer. Uh, this one, this one here, and this one here, if you see those bumps, that, those are calcium deposits on that, that egg. This one's pretty rough and kind of similar, but not not quite as drastic as this one. Those are eggs, just not in perfect, not perfect eggs. So, I'm not going to choose these. Now, overall, I think if I'm judging, I have like maybe two pointy eggs. Um, this one, and was it this? One? This one maybe kind of pointy. Most of mine are pretty fat and round at the top. I like that. Um, these are some. Some of these are pretty big eggs. So I'm hoping every. Everything hatches out real well. Um, one concern I do have is this one down here. A lot of these turners I see come with, with 41 egg capacity because usually this one is not, you usually can't put one in here. So I'm a little concerned. I put my smallest egg in there. I'm a little concerned this is gonna, this is gonna be a problem. Uh, my smallest egg happened to be from my old girl. So, um, disappointed with that but I wish it would have been some, with somebody else but because uh, I want the old girls to hatch out but um, so I put the smallest egg there hopefully uh, I'm gonna keep a good eye on that one and make sure it doesn't crack now something to note on this little hatching sheet that I got it it's gonna have places for me to keep time humidity or temperature and humidity and all that sort of stuff on each day I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely do that. I'm gonna keep track of humidity even though we're going with a dry hatch. Um, and then once we get down to, to day um, 18, we're gonna lock it down, pull the turner out, and get going. So this also says not to turn the eggs on day one. It kind of tells you this this little sheet's pretty cool. Um, I am gonna turn the eggs on day one, and I'm gonna tell you why because I think. This sheet is really designed for somebody who is turning these by hand. That's why you're checking off each day uh, which ones are, are, are turned and, and when you turn them and all that sort of stuff. But so in the early days, these embryos inside are pretty vulnerable. So you turning them by hand, you're, if you're doing this by hand, you'll learn. Uh, it's not always super simple just to turn them over. Because you get them turned over and then they want to roll back over and hit the other ones. So that's something to keep in mind as as you're doing this. So if I was turning these by hand, day one, I probably wouldn't uh, turn them. But moving forward after day one, I would turn them. These, this is going to be such a gentle turn with this turner. I'm going to go ahead and day one start turning. Uh, so that's just something else to keep keep an eye on, keep thinking about. So. All right, so I'm gonna try to open this incubator, pull out the temperature gauges, put the eggs in, drop the temperature gauges back down in there as quickly as I can so that I don't lose a lot of heat. Here goes nothing. Two eggs is heavy. Not bad. The temperature did drop, but 
not super low so we're gonna let it incubate and let the incubation begin so here we go all right so for the second time we're gonna wrap this video up and uh this will be part one of the video uh look for the rest of the series coming up soon uh, we're gonna finish this incubation we're still gonna walk you through the whole thing um just for the sake of time we're gonna shorten this video up and so that's not one big long video um but that's gonna be a wrap tonight so hey thanks for coming to the farm i look forward to seeing you back on the farm again soon thanks